Hello friends, hates getting his hair cut because he's terrified of small talk here, bringing you another Dota 2 video on the three current best heroes for stomping pubs in Dota 2. These are not heroes that I think are OP because of their viability in pro Dota, even though they are very viable. Rather, these three heroes are the ones that will give you the highest potential to completely stomp and obliterate your pubs over any other hero in the game. Quickly before getting into the video, if you haven't subscribed to your boy's channel, please consider doing so. I am super close to 100,000 subscribers and hitting that milestone would be absolutely awesome. For, but in any case, without further ado, let's get right into the video. Number one, Ricky. Why is Ricky OP? Because in 7.28, his Ag Scepter was changed so that his Tricks of the Trade hits two targets instead of just one. This has resulted in Ricky's late game being basically the most broken thing in the history of Dota. And I realize that Dota 2 content creators use this line a lot, so don't take it from me. Take it from TI winner Owie2000, who said while casting DPC, Quote, I've played Dota for a very long time, like over 10 years, and I literally have never seen something as broken as Ricky with Octarine Core, Arcane Blink in the late game. Why did he say this? Because with Octarine Core, Arcane Blink, Daedalus, Ags, and a Battle Fury, Ricky is just a literally untargetable, unkillable hero blender permanently. This is straight up not possible to deal with other than by just ending the game before it goes late. But due to the nature of pubs fundamentally being five strangers having to solve a complicated puzzle as a team and failing miserably for 50 minutes straight, pubs almost always go to the late game. And so heroes who are completely unstoppable in the late game will thrive tremendously in the pub scene. So if you are a carry player or mid player and you want some of the freest MMR in the history of Dota, Ricky right now is absolutely your hero. The item build for Ricky is Treads, Orb of Corrosion, Battle Fury, Ags, Daedalus, Blink, Octarine Core, Arcane Blink, and then Rapier. The skill build for Ricky is Max Blink Strike, then Tricks of the Trade, only going for a value point in Smokescreen when you feel like you need it for fights. As for talents, you go 20 attack speed, 20 damage, Blink Strike cast range, and then Tricks of the Trade cooldown. The general game plan for this hero is to basically hard farm Battle Fury plus Ags, then show up to every single team fight that you think isn't just a massive throw. The way that you want to take team fights as Ricky is to jump in with Tricks of the Trade, then Blink Strike out if the enemy team is winning, and Blink Strike in for more kills if the enemy team is losing and running away. You basically just rinse and repeat this until you either jump out of a lost fight with a couple of free kills or you kill the entire enemy team. The fact of the matter is that you will eventually do so much overwhelming damage and have such a low cooldown on tricks of the trade that this jumping in and out strategy will eventually win you fights. So if you are Ricky in a game, Never give up, no matter how bad it looks. I have yet to see something on the current patch that outcarries a late game Ricky. The only real decent counter to Ricky is hard lockdown. Pros are currently picking heroes like Puck and Lion who can disable Ricky before he gets off his tricks of the trade, or they can punish him when he's trying to jump in and out of fights with Blink Strike. Number two, Bat Rider. Why is Bat OP? Because in 7.28, most significantly, sticky napalm damage was doubled to creeps, instantly resulting in Batrider becoming one of the fastest farmers in the game. On top of this, ancient creep magic resistance was reduced from 70% to 50%, and even though napalm now only does half damage to ancients, Batrider is still easily able to farm stacks of them. This change made Batrider fundamentally uncounterable, because if you are ever playing against him in a game where it's incredibly hard to kill somebody with Napalm or Lasso, the solution to this is simple as Bat. You just kill creeps instead of heroes. And because you kill creeps so quickly and safely from a distance with Firefly, it's honestly just not reasonable to stop a Batrider from farming. So the solution to this problem is that you try to outfarm Bat. And the problem with this is that Bat outfarms almost every hero in the game, and any hero that will actually outfarm a Bat, such as Alchemist or Sven, will get completely obliterated by Bat in the game. So, in either case, Batrider will either farm creeps or heroes and get absolutely huge. And Batrider late game with the new Octarine Core, Shiva's Guard, and Radiance is a complete menace. Not only does he pump out metric shit tons of AoE magic damage, 
but he's also hands down the single greatest BKB piercing initiator in the game, with Flaming Lasso guaranteeing that you can eliminate one person before fights even start. In other words, aside from perfect play, there currently exists no viable solution to this hero in Dota 2. In the NADBC, EG is literally first picking this hero for Abed in every single one of their matches that it's not banned, and then throwing it mid even against counter picks like Slark, then farming and crushing the game anyway. The item build for Batrider is Bottle, Boots of Travel, BKB. After this, Radiance, Octarine, and Shivas are all viable items depending on whether you value more damage, lower cooldown spells, or armor and healing reduction respectively. Blink Dagger, of course, is always a great item on Batrider if you really need to jump and kill one very important hero, the skill build for Batrider is Max Napalm, then Max Firefly, going for a value point in Flame Break when you need it for fights to knock people back. Skipping Lasso is viable as long as you're farming, but you want to skill this up the moment that you actually want to kill somebody. As for talents, the build is Spell Amp, Sticky Napalm Damage, Flame Break Charges, then Flaming Lasso Cooldown Reduction. The general game plan for this hero is to relatively hard farm until you have Boots of Travel and BKB, then you can casually take fights if your BKB is up, hard commit to fights if your lasso is up, and avoid fighting to push creep waves when both are down. The counter to Batrider is, surprisingly, not even to counter his lasso with save. Although that is quite impactful, heroes that can jump and kill Bat before his BKB or through his BKB are excellent. Storm Spirit and Legion Commander come to mind as decent solutions. Number 3. Outworld Destroyer. Why is ODOP? OD quickly went from being the worst hero in the patch to arguably the best hero in the patch when he received a flurry of buffs in the 7.28 A and B patches. Probably the biggest thing that I hear most pros complaining about is just how ridiculous this hero's base stats are. His base move speed is in the top 10% of the game, his base armor is the 5th highest in the game, his base regen is good, his base damage is good, and his stat gains are all good. Basically, because of his stats, OD has thousands of gold and net worth directly built into the hero, which, even without good spells, might actually make a hero viable. On top of this, people slowly figured out that the old-fashioned OD builds were not going to cut it for this new OD. This hero has no way to farm quickly anymore based on his abilities, but he scales incredibly well with items. So, something had to be done with the build in order to solve this farming problem. Thus, people started rushing Meteor Hammer on OD in every single role out of necessity. Conveniently, his Astral also sets up perfectly for Meteor Hammer as long as you time the Meteor Hammer for when the progress bar hits the H in the word Banished. Furthermore, at the start of the patch, people were skipping his Q ability entirely, opting to max Astral and his passive. Basically, people fundamentally misunderstood how broken the new Q ability is. Now it's understood that this ability can be spammed to give you virtually infinite mana regen because it costs a flat percentage and it works with your aura. And this lets you infinitely spam both pure damage right clicks and magic damage nukes with Astral. The damage you can output with this hero in the laning stage makes him impossible to lane against for any safe laner or mid. The best you can do is not feed him in lane. And the fantastic thing about having such a crazy strong laning phase is that this hero's late game is also absolutely incredible. Depending on your mana pool, your ult can literally one-shot enemy hard carries, and his Q lets him right-click for far more damage than most carries in the game, even with zero damage items. So, you can pick this hero in 4, 5, or 3 position and still carry the game which is great for pubs because you can't always trust your team to carry you. The item build for OD is to rush Meteor Hammer into Power Treads. After this, you want to build BKB, Ags, and Blink, prioritizing an early Blink if the enemy team has some sort of really important single target disable like Duel. If the enemy team has heavy magical damage and stuns, then BKB should probably be your first big item. Otherwise, an early Ags lets you set up on people from farther away and lets you steal more mana for hitting big ulties. Your late game luxury items are Sheepstick and Octarine Core. The skill build for OD is 1 point in Q for securing ranged creeps, 1 point in passive for infinity mana, then max Astral to spam for big damage in the lane. After that, it doesn't really matter whether you max your Q or passive first, but generally people value skipping talents until all skills are maxed out. 
As for the talents, generally people go HP talent, mana talent, ulti damage talent into arcane orb damage. The general game plan for this hero is to rush meteor hammer as fast as possible, even starting with meteor hammer components possibly in your starting build, and then stand menacingly in front of towers, meteor hammering enemies if they show up, and towers if enemies don't show up. In fights, it's really important to recognize that the enemy team is going to try to use everything to kill you, because otherwise, you can just save your team. So good positioning is absolutely crucial on this hero. The only counter to OD currently seems to be zoo heroes like Beastmaster and Lycan, because OD lacks any good way of clearing summons. This is the end of the video.